Ladies and gentlemen, this is an instructional video on calculating slope from the formula and from looking at a graph if you're calculating the slope of vertical and horizontal lines from the graph. All right, ladies and gentlemen, jot the formula for calculating slope into your notebook. So, first thing I want you to jot down is m equals, m is the variable we use to describe slope, and it's this complicated looking fraction here. This is actually the formula. And so what this top part, the numerator means is y sub 2. This 2 is a subscript, so we say sub in front of the number 2. So it's y sub 2 minus y sub 1, that's in the numerator, divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And that looks really fancy and complicated, but what that really means is the vertical change which is the, represents the y-axis over the horizontal change, which is represented by the x-axis. And even more simply what that means is rise over run. So I'll calculate my rise and I'll calculate my run. And what I want everybody to remember is you need to keep your answer for slope written as a fraction. Even if the denominator is 1, you'll need to keep your answer written as a fraction. So if you don't have these notes jotted down in your notebook, go ahead and press pause. Make sure you jot everything on the slide in your notebook. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is our first example. So you can see one tip or strategy that I always use is I rewrote the formula at the top of my page here. So that's going to help me keep me on track because my job is to calculate the slope of the line that goes between these two points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate that slope of that line. So my first tip for you besides writing down the formula, so I guess that's my second tip, is to label your ordered pairs. And an ordered pair always has an x first and a y second. And I'll call this ordered pair my ones. So this is, this is my x sub 1 and this is my y sub 1. I'm going to do the same with my second ordered pair. This is my x value, this is my y value, and because it's the second ordered pair, I'm going to put the 2 here. So now I have my x sub 2 and my y sub 2. Now I'm just going to follow my formula. So my formula says I need to do y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So I'm going to write that down. m equals, because that's my slope, y sub 2, which is negative 7, minus negative 5. Watch your signs here. Negative 7 minus negative 5 over, now what I have to do is x sub 2, which is negative 2, minus x sub 1, which is 3. So I'm going to do negative 2 minus 3. Okay, I'm going to keep in mind my rules of integers, and anytime I see a subtraction, I'm going to change it to add the opposite. So I'm going to add the opposite of negative 5 and add the opposite of negative 3. Okay, so what I have here is negative 7 plus 5, which is going to give me negative 2. And then I have negative 2 plus negative 3, which is going to give me negative 5. So in the first slide, I said to keep your answer as a fraction. I definitely have a fraction here. And I'll need to simplify it if I can. 2 and 5 don't have a common factor, so I'm going to keep the 2 and the 5. But do you notice how I have two negative numbers here? A uh, fraction is a division. So negative divided by negative is really going to give me a positive 2 fifths. So I need to divide out those negatives. So my final answer is 2 fifths. So to make a connection to my formula, 2 would be my vertical change, or my rise, and 5 is my horizontal change, or my, my um, run. Okay, here's my next example. Again, I want to point out that I wrote down my formula, so that's going to keep me in track. The next thing I want to do, again, is label my ordered pairs. So, again, I have x first and then y. And again, I call these my subscript or my ones because they're my first ordered pairs. This is my second ordered pair, so I put the 2 on it. Okay, so m equals 
y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So I'm going to do 8 minus 4. 8 minus 4 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So that's negative 5 minus 5. Negative 5 minus 5. Okay, I'm going to change my subtractions to add the opposite. So instead of minus 4, I'm going to do plus negative 4. Instead of minus 5, I'm going to do plus negative 5. So that's going to give me 8 plus negative 4 is 4. Negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. Okay, now I want to point out two things. I've got 4 and negative 10 here in my fraction. These have a common factor, 4 and negative 10. I know I can take a 2 out. So 2 goes into 4 2 whole times, and 2 goes into 10 negative 5 times. So my slope is 2 over negative 5. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back at it. So, again, you'll notice I have my formula written at the top of my page. I'm going to label my ordered pairs. I'm going to go a little more quickly this time because this is my third time doing it. So I'm going to order them, or label them, excuse me, the same way I did my first two examples. I'm going to start substituting my values in. y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So I'm going to go 6 minus 6 over negative 2 minus 3. All right, I'm going to change my subtraction to add the opposite. And what I'm going to find here is I'm going to get 0 divided by negative 5. All right, ladies and gentlemen, anytime you have 0 in your fraction, you have to simplify it. So 0 divided by 5 is going to give me 0. If you're not sure what the answer is going to be, please feel free to type it in a calculator. The next slide is going to show you a graph as to what a slope of a line going through these two points would look like if it has a zero slope. Alright ladies and gentlemen what I have here is the ordered pairs from the slide before along with all the work and I want to show you on a graph how these two ordered pairs um, have a slope of zero if you draw a line between the two of them. So if I plot 3, 6 I would go over 3 to the right and up 6. So that's my first point. And negative 2, 6 would look like that. I draw a straight line through there. That's my ordered pay, or that's my, that's my line. So if I was just looking at the graph, I would pick one of the points to start with and I would go ahead and calculate the rise and run. So if I start on this point right here, my rise would be 0 and my run would be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be negative 5. 0 divided by negative 5 is 0. So what I want to point out is that the slope of any horizontal line will always be 0 because any horizontal line will never have a vertical change. So the vertical change is the number in the numerator. A horizontal line will only have a horizontal change. So 0 divided by any number will always give you 0. So the slope of any horizontal line will always be 0. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our last example. I'm going to do exactly what we did in the first three examples. And I'm going to label my ordered pairs. So I have x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, and y sub 2. I'm going to go ahead and substitute those values into my formula. So y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I'm going to change my subtraction to add the opposite. And what I'm going to notice here is I will get negative 7 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator. Okay, so if I ever have 0 in the denominator of a fraction, I also need to simplify my fraction. And this is going to simplify to be a word, not a number. So any number, any number in the numerator divided by zero in the denominator will give you undefined for a slope. If you're not sure where the placement of the zero is, whether it's going to give you zero for an answer or undefined, you can plug it into your calculator. 
So if you plug negative 7 divided by 0 in your calculator, your calculator might use this word undefined, but most likely it'll show some sort of a calculation error. It might just say E, it might say error, it might say division by 0, but you'll need to know on a test, on any sort of summative assessment or formative assessment, you'll need to write undefined for the slope. The next slide will show you a graph reason as to why the slope is undefined. Alright ladies and gentlemen, what I did here was I have my ordered pairs from the slide before, I have all my work where I wrote undefined, and now I'm going to plot the ordered pair negative 1, 3, so that would be my point, negative 1, negative 4. So you can see I have a vertical line here. Alright, if I were to pick two points from my line and calculate the slope, so I'd start with one of the points, I would calculate the rise to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's my rise, and my run is 0. So again, any number divided by 0 is going to give me undefined for my slope. And again, I want to point out and stress that the slope of any vertical line will always be undefined. And the reason for this is that the, the, the two ordered pairs will never have a horizontal change. So if you have a vertical line, there will never be a horizontal change between those two values. So the horizontal change will be zero, resulting in an answer of undefined. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this video is over. You can pause the, stop the video, finish your checkpoint questions, check in with your teacher, and get your homework. Have a great day.